So chylus effusions are a very troublesome component of all of these lymphatic malformations. Um, the chylus nature of the effusions should be apparent from the fact that, um, as we've mentioned so often in the last two days, um, the lymphatics are so central to the absorption of chylomicrons from the intestinal viscera so that it, within the transit of um, the lymph through the channels, if the channels are disrupted or malfunctional in any way, there can be accumulation of fluid within the serous surfaces, and this will contain the chylomicron material that uh, comes initially from the lymph. This is a patient of mine who uh, uh, has uh, what we would now call generalized lymphatic anomaly. Um, I think when he, he, we took this picture, he was about six years old, and you can get a distinct impression about how much fluid is present in that belly uh, uh, and has uh, been a, um, quite a persistent problem for him. He was just hospitalized for many weeks uh, after he uh, acquired a respiratory infection, and during that time his effusive disease got much, much worse. He uh, eventually uh, was placed on uh, serolimus and is doing quite a bit better at this point. But just to show you the, the issues, this is what chylus ascites looks like in the hand, so to speak. So you can see this lake of uh, milky fluid that is um, engulfing the intestinal viscera on, on an open resection. Um, this is what it might look like uh, radiographically. Uh, again, you get, the, you get the general idea about why this is such a substantial problem, and of course you can see the um, air fluid levels uh, present uh, on this imaging procedure as well. Similar problems occur in the chest, anywhere that there is a, a serous surface that can accumulate fluid that originates from the lymphatic circulation uh, will be potentially uh, prone to this. Um, you can even see evidence of it on this um, typical um, uh, lymphocytogram, which of the type that Dr. Hofsepian showed earlier today, but here you can see the um, accumulation. Uh, again, because you're injecting the radionuclide at the level of the feet and it ascends the lymphatics, if that uh, um, radioactively stained lymph, so to speak, emerges from the circulatory trunk and ends up in one of the serous cavities, it will of course have radioactivity and be able to be visualized. This is what the chyle might look like after a paracentesis, for example, therapeutically to alleviate uh, abdominal distension or respiratory distress. Of course, it's only a transient benefit because unless you uh, uh, um, relieve the underlying problem, it will simply reaccumulate through the same uh, physical dynamics that caused it to accumulate in the first place. So um, I hope this projects reasonably well. This is a kind of a schematic uh, of management that one might uh, undertake to um, deal with a patient of this type. So um, if you suspect chylosocytes and chylothorax would be a, really a very similar kind of inter, uh, um, interaction with this scenario. Uh, you might initially undertake imaging with CT or MRI to confirm the fact, if you had any doubt uh, based on your physical exam, that the enlargement of the abdomen was in fact on the basis of the fluid accumulation. Um, you would then uh, undertake a diagnostic procedure to uh, sample the fluid and among other things that you would learn from the sampling is whether or not it contains chyle by looking for an analysis typically of triglyceride or of chylomicrons themselves. This is where we get into the medical treatment step. The most important, uh, and let me first of all say that medical therapy is sometimes highly effective, sometimes completely or almost completely ineffective, um, but it is a necessary step to pass through, I would believe, before going on to more uh, aggressive measures. The very first step is to um, institute a low-fat diet, and by low-fat we mean typically less than five grams of uh, fatty intake uh, per 24 hours. Because we're limiting total fat to that extent, we do have to supplement the medium chain 
uh, triglycerides in order to uh, uh, support some of the, the vital bodily functions that do require this component from the diet. But the purpose of the fatty restriction is basically to reduce splanchnic blood flow and to reduce, uh, uh, sorry, to reduce splanchnic um, uh, lymph production that is necessary for the absorption of this material. And often that will be a sufficient intervention to halt the uh, accumulation of the ascites. At times, the need to intervene uh, nutritionally is so profound that one has to actually resort to total parenteral nutrition. Um, but in either event, um, these individuals, when they respond to the dietary intervention, will require long-term uh, dietary restriction. When they have concomitant lymphedema, as is often the case in many of these generalized anomalies, you will find that the lymphedema actually gets substantially better as well uh, when you undertake the fat uh, restriction in the diet. If dietary manipulation alone is uh, unsuccessful, um, the next step in treatment is typically the addition of somatostatin uh, to uh, the regimen. Uh, trade name is octreotide. It's a or somatostatin analog, whose role it is to reduce splanchnic blood flow and thereby indirectly to reduce uh, splanchnic lymph uh, production. Um, and again, this is often quite successful with the proviso that one typically has to escalate the dose to relatively high levels, and uh, sometimes the, um, the use of the drug is required for extended periods of time, uh, often uh, perhaps on a chronic basis. It is an injectable drug, so that clearly is a, uh, a disadvantage for long-term therapy. And um, uh, remember that we may have to continue to resort to therapeutic removal of fluid during the interval in which we're waiting for our therapies uh, to work. If these elements fail, we then have to go on to more aggressive uh, forms of management that Dr. Itkin will talk about uh, in his talk to follow. Uh, if our medical therapy is successful, then we, we need at a minimum maintenance of this medium chain triglyceride supplemented low fat diet. And ideally, if that is successful, plus or minus the long term uh, or intermittent use of octreotide, and I have many patients who fall into this category then we can sometimes see recovery over time or we can see maintenance of an adequate therapeutic response uh, in the wake of uh, long-term uh, management. So uh, chylothorax falls into a very similar uh, uh, thought um, uh, algorithm. Uh, we obviously want to treat the underlying disease in the case of these lymphatic malformations. They may not, that may not be so highly uh, achievable other than interventions that are just now on the forefront, like the use of sirolimus to treat the underlying um, vascular growth disorder. Again, we may need repeated thoracentesis. Um, there may need, be a need at times in the uh, natural history of these patients for continuous drainage interventions. The dietary modifications are the same, a low-fat diet, less than 5 grams per 24 hours with medium-chain triglyceride supplementation. Sometimes, again, the need for parenteral nutrition, at least uh, at an interval, for if it's a high-volume chylothorax. And sometimes we resort to uh, pleurodesis in these cases. And then there are a variety of surgical interventions should these measures ultimately fail. So this is an example um, that was published by a group several years ago from Brazil to show the time course of response to octreotide in four separate cases. In, in their use, uh, fundamentally, it was about a 10-day course uh, to bring uh, the condition under control. I think this is a very um, idealized uh, view of this. I think sometimes it can take quite a lot longer than even the two weeks that are generally found in the textbook. And um, as I've said, there are cases where long-term medical management with injectable octreotide is necessary. And as I say, I have uh, many patients in my practice in whom that um, is the uh, indicated intervention. Those are the things that we can do on the medical side. Dr. Itkin can do a lot of magic, so we're going to let him get up and show us what he can do. Thank you.